Welcome to the University of Maryland Extension Master Gardener Botany video. Botany is the study of plant life. It is important to have a working knowledge of botany so that we can recognize different plants, diagnose plant problems, and make planting recommendations to our clients, which require us to have a sound understanding of the basic structure and process of plants. As stewards of the land, we appreciate the aesthetic and therapeutic values of plants, as well as their importance in wildlife habitat and soil erosion prevention. Throughout this video, we are just gonna to touch on brief points of botany. And in this illustration of root and shoot terminology, I would like to point out that everything above the soil level is referred to as the shoot system, and everything below the soil level is referred to as the root system. All organisms are comprised of cells. Plant cells provide structure in plants. Meristems are tissues in which cells are actively dividing, resulting in the growth of plants. The cells that develop in a meristem differentiate into various cell types that are required in a vascular plant, such as the roots, the stems, and the leaves. Roots have several functions. They anchor the plant, absorb water and nutrients, store food, and support the stem. Roots anchoring the plant can take two forms, a tap root and or a fibrous root. The tap root has a main leader root that reaches down deep into the soil, and the fibrous root has more branching shallow roots. Tap roots have a main root to access deep sources of water with branching side roots. Tap roots are a good strategy for plants in areas where rainfall is uncertain. However, digging up and moving a plant with a large tap root is very difficult. Fibrous roots have no main stem but branches. Where water is plentiful, roots may be shallow and may not anchor the plant as well as a deep root. This is why it is better to water plants deeply at intervals rather than a little each day. The functions of stems are to support the leaves, reproductive structures, and fruit. They contain the vascular system that transports food and water to the plant. Most importantly, the stem positions the leaves to receive light for photosynthesis. The leaf is the site of photosynthesis. Photosynthesis in green plants is when light energy is captured and used to convert water, carbon dioxide, and minerals into oxygen and energy-rich organic compounds. The leaf surface accepts light and regulates the evaporation of water. Here is an illustration of photosynthesis on a leaf. Carbon dioxide and water go in, oxygen and sugars come out. The vascular system of the stem continues into the leaves, where we refer to it as veins. Several different vein patterns are seen in leaves and aid in their identification, such as veins and leaves can be parallel, such as in corn, dichotomous, such as in a ginkgo tree, pinnately veined as in a beech tree, or palmately veined as in a maple tree. In some plants, leaves have been modified to adapt to the environment. Cactus spines are modified to discourage nibbling. Needles are modified for areas of dry wind and cold weather. And needles also contain resin for wound healing and fire. Regulation of plant growth. Plant growth and development requires three main metabolic processes, photosynthesis, respiration, and transpiration. A plant must maintain an appropriate balance among these three processes for optimum health. Photosynthesis is the process by which the plant makes its own food. Respiration, in order for the plant to benefit from the food that it produces, it must break it down and extract the energy from it. In respiration, sugars and oxygen are broken down into carbon dioxide, water, and energy. The energy is used to build new molecules for growth and perform the everyday metabolic functions the plant needs for survival. In transpiration, it pulls water and minerals up through the xylem from the roots and transports the water 
for all parts of the plant. Water vapor evaporates from the leaf stomata to help cool off the leaf. Here is an illustration of the hydrologic water cycle. As water evaporates from plants, condenses in clouds, falls back to the, to the ground, is taken up by plants, or is run off and back into the oceans, lakes, rivers, and some stored in groundwater, but then others are evaporated back up into the system where it condenses out of the clouds and then creates rain precipitation again. Environmental growth regulation. Light influences plant growth by its quality through wavelength, quantity and duration through photo period. The relative lengths of night and day influence the flowering of some plants. Commercial growers can induce the flowering by the manipulation of day length and or the application of synthetic hormones. Plants can also respond to touch or physical stress in several ways. For example, strong winds result in shorter plants, and tendrils will curl around any object they encounter, and roots grow toward moist soil. Length of life. One way to classify plants is based on the length of their life. Annuals live for one growing season. In that season, they flower, set seed, and die. Biennial plants live for two seasons. The first year, they produce leaves, roots, and compact stems. Flowers are produced and seed developed in the second season, and perennials return year after year. USDA zones. The USDA classifies plants according to their hardiness. Hardiness refers to the lowest temperature that a plant will likely withstand. The United States and Canada are divided into 11 zones. Each zone is assigned a number that indicates what the average lowest temperature in that zone is likely to be. And remember, these zone numbers can change over time with climate change. Classification of plants. Each plant is assigned a two word Latin name that identifies it beyond a doubt. The two Latin words together name the species and are known as the binomial. Binomials were designed by Carl Linnaeus in the 18th century. He is considered the father of taxonomy, and he has named many plants that were sent to him from all over the world. Binomials are written in italics and are underlined. The first name is the genus, and it is always capitalized. The second word is the epithet, and it is not capitalized. The specific epithet can be thought of as a describer. For example, in Pieris japonica, the specific epithet describes the place of origin, Japan. In Yucca filamentosa, the specific epithet describes a feature of the plant, filamentosa, filament. Why do we use binomials? Plants are often known by more than one common name. It can also happen that one plant with a fairly common name can actually represent different plants. The Latin binomial permits us to communicate with each other without confusion. Thank you and we hope that you enjoyed this botany video. Be on the lookout for our other University of Maryland Extension Master Gardener programs, videos, and workshops that can be found on our website, our Facebook page, and our YouTube channel.